Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Bootleg, the Tennesseans' weekly high school football show brought to you live from 1100 Broadway. I'm your host, Michael Murphy. Uh, I'm sure you can tell we are down a man tonight. Tom Krieger is in Florida getting a little R&R. &R. Not to worry, though, filling in for him, Murfreesboro Daily News Journal high school sports reporter Cecil Joyce. Cecil? I'm happy to be here. I think we would both rather be where Tom is right now. Yeah, but I, I would think so. It's fun doing this as well. Yeah. Um, Let's get right into it. Uh, and Cecil, this first topic, it's got your name written all over it. Blackman wide receiver Trey Knox commits to Arkansas. Knox is a four-star prospect. He was number four on the Tennesseans' Dandy Dozen. He made his announcement Monday. Cecil, what can you tell us about Knox's decision? I kind of felt it was going to be Arkansas all along. Mm -hmm. uh, you just kind of get a vibe from him every time you talk to him about Arkansas or any of the other four or five that was on his list. Um, I got a chance to talk with Arkansas wide receivers coach Justin Stepp at the, right before the Oakland Blackman game. Uh -huh. And you could kind of tell he really felt good about their chances, and he loves, loves Knox. Mm -hmm. Knox is the kind of guy that likes to be loved, and I think that was a huge factor in going there. Yeah. I think Arkansas, pro Arkansas probably showed him more love than any of the other teams that were in his top four or five. That's a big part of the, the recruiting game nowadays. Now, how much do you think uh, teammate Adonis Ote committing to the Arkansas? Were they a, pa a package deal, or do you, did it just turn out that way, you think? I won't say a package deal. They, they talked about it a lot. Uh, Trey told me that uh, they both went and scouted Arkansas at the same time. They uh -huh. were taking visits at the same time. Uh, he said he thought Adonis kind of had a feeling that he knew Knox was going to go to Arkansas. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt. I mean, they'll yeah. probably be roommates, is my, my guess. You know, they've been friends for a good long time, so it didn't hurt for sure. I gotcha. Well, the Hogs could certainly use the help. They are not, not the smoothest start for the season for them. It's not, but Trey said he likes their offensive scheme, the way they sling the ball around was his exact quote. Um, mm -hmm. He says he has a chance to play early, and in, in some of the scores we've looked at, he might be able to come in yep. and step in and really be a factor for the Hogs early. Right. Moving on. Uh, game I was at last week. Independence got right back into the Region 6-6A race Friday with a huge win over first place Brentwood. Uh, quarterback Ethan Cash making just his fourth start for Independence. Threw for 466 yards and five touchdowns. Most of that went to Purdue commitment TJ Sheffield. He had a career high 301 yards, three touchdowns. Cecil, you had a chance to see Independence early in the season. Took a, took a thumping to Oakland. Uh, they actually started one and three. Are you surprised at all that Scott Blade and the Eagles are still still hanging around? No, because Scott Blade is one of the best coaches in the mid-state. Uh, he always finds a way to get the most out of his players. It's kind of like a Steve Spurrier at, at uh, Florida situation. Mm -hmm. He'll just plug in a quarterback and yep. they're going to put up big numbers. That's, that's a Scott Blade system right there. And, of course, he's got a, a great receiver on the outside in Sheffield. So you put a quarterback with that kind of receiver and he can put up good numbers. Yeah, I think – protecting the, whoever the quarterback is, whether it be Ethan Cash or Nathan Sisko, protecting those guys has, has been the key. When they can keep them upright, they score a lot of points and they're good. They're, they are hard to stop. Uh, the Eagles, they're at CPA on Friday. It's a non-region game, but if they're able to knock off the unbeaten Lions, uh, look out. I think a lot of people are going to be jumping on that Indy bandwagon. I think that should be a good game because uh, CPA will give up a few yards. Mm -hmm. I saw CPA against uh, Smyrna. Smyrna yeah. gained some yards on them. They just couldn't punch it in the end zone when it really counted. They did the same thing against Kane Ridge, speaking of Smyrna. And that's what that's what Independence's problem was against Oakland in the first game. The seven points isn't indicative of how they moved the ball. They, mm -hmm. just, they couldn't get 30 in. They yeah. got from the 30 to the 30, yeah. and they couldn't do much else with it. Um, speaking of some others, another surprise team for some, East Nashville. I know some were on the fence about them. I think they made a lot, a few more believers last week with that win at Giles County. Uh, Eagles eclipsed a 58 point mark for the second straight week, but I think more impressive is they held Giles County to a season low 27 points. That is not easy to do with Bryce Wallace back there. Uh, Cecil, what do you know about this East, East Nashville team? Well, I do know they beat a, a good, solid 6A team in Riverdale to start the season. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Riverdale is very young. They were a lot younger then than they are now. Mm -hmm. But they beat them 30-22. to 22. And if you're a 3A team and you can beat a 6A team that's got the history of Riverdale, yep. uh, that's, that's a great start to the season. And they haven't slowed down since. Yeah. Um, the Eagles, they host Lipscomb on Friday. And if they can get past the Mustangs, which can't overlook Lipscomb, they've been in just about every game. Uh, if they can get past them, it's going to be that East Pearl Cone matchup. Pearl Cone would come in with two losses, but that would be for the district or Region 5-3A championship and uh, maybe one of the most anticipated matchups this season. Um, now it's time to look ahead to our game of the week. 
I'm going to be out there at Innsworth Friday. Uh, Innsworth is taking on rival Montgomery Bell Academy. Big Division II AAA East Middle matchup. It's been pretty tightly contested in recent memories. Their last five meetings have been decided by four points or less. Uh, Nebraska commitment Jackson Hanna, he leads a big red defense. It's been pretty good. They're coming off a 42-0 shutout of Memphis's White Station. Innsworth's offense has kind of found its rhythm in the last couple weeks. They have the backfield tandem of Keyshawn Lawrence and Tolio Malone. If they're going to win, those two guys are going to have to be good. Uh, what, what's your feeling about this game, Cecil? I know it's not in your coverage area, but you're familiar with it. I, 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 was, I was actually seeing a Montgomery Bell Academy Innsworth game before, and, and it, it doesn't get much better. I mean, mm -hmm. when Innsworth was built, you know, a lot of the NBA faction went over there, yep. so th this will be a big rivalry for years and years to come. Uh, it's hard to, to beat a Marty Everard red squad, and that's, that's why I would lean a little bit toward NBA in this game. Yeah, and not to take anything about first year, take anything against first year Innsworth coach Jeremy Garrett, but yeah, this is about praise for Marty Udivard. He is, I mean, they've been in the Blue Cross Bowl four straight years. Be you didn't think that at the beginning of all of those seasons, and they somehow find a way to get in. He's a big game coach. Yeah, he definitely is. Um, I anticipate a low scoring affair this year. The last few have been. Uh, the Tigers won 10-7 last year. I think NBA gets them this time. I go 17-14, big red. I think that's a pretty good pick. I, if you want me to pick, I'm going to say uh, NBA 22-17. I think it might. Have so Tom's three pick. point, three point. And but that yeah. is actually Tom's pick is NBA 24 to 14. Great minds, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, kind of sticking in Division II AAA, Brentwood Academy. Can anyone beat Brentwood Academy? This was coming into the year. This was supposed to be kind of a rebuilding year for the Eagles. Uh, it has not been at all. They have outscored their first seven opponents, 289 to 43. That includes last week's 35-7 win at Baylor. Hillsboro is actually the only team to score in double figures against them all year. That was in week one. Things are about to get a little tougher for them, though. It is. McCauley's a tough matchup. Uh, McCauley was voted number one, I think, in mm -hmm. D2 AAA at one point early in the season yep. before Brentwood Academy reclaimed it and hasn't given it up since. Yep. But, you know, Brimwood Academy is on some kind of roll that we haven't seen since, you know, the Carlton Flat days back mm -hmm. in the uh, 90s when they were rough shotting over every opponent. And you look at these scores, I mean, they're scoring in the 40s every game. They're giving up single digits in every yep. game. That's, that's a dominance that that's, I don't think anybody in at least Division Two is going to stop. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it gets a little tougher, though. They got McCauley this week, then they got NBA, then they got Innsworth. Those are three teams that, at least in the beginning of the season, are going for region championships, and they're all still very much alive in that race. So. And NBA has given Brentwood Academy their toughest games over the last three or four absolutely. years. Absolutely. You talk about those Blue Cross Bowl matchups. Right. I mean, some high scoring affairs there. Yes, absolutely. Last, year, last year's was a little lower, but uh, yeah, they've been, they've, they've scored some points between those two schools. Now, I guess we're going to move on to a little rapid fire talk, taking you through uh, the rest of our top 10 games this week. All right, we're going to get Michael's picks, and I will give you Tom Kreger's picks along the okay. way as well. We already discussed NBA and Innsworth. The next game is Montgomery Central, which is 7-0 and 3-0 and and in Region 5-4A. They're playing Springfield, a division, uh, defending runner-up Springfield. They're 4-2 and 2-0, and and so obviously a huge region game for them. Yeah, big postseason implications, two unbeaten teams in the region. Uh, Indians off to the best start in school history. I think their best start was actually... Five and zero, oh, so they've they've far surpassed that. I think the fairy tale start ends Friday, though. I think Springfield is a really good football team. They're coming off a loss to Beach, but uh, in, in in the games against similar sized opponents, they have looked really good. Dayron Johnson's one of the best wide receivers in the state. Uh, I like Springfield, 27-20. And Tom Kreger likes Springfield, 21 to 20. I think a lot of our picks were the same. I think a lot of your week. picks are the same this week. Sorry, Next folks. game will be Davidson Academy, which is 6 and 0 and 2 and 0 in Division 2 Single A West, playing Fayette Academy 6 and 0, 3 and 0. Uh, obviously the winner of this game is going to be yeah, in the prime driver's seat. This is for all the marbles. Uh, I would expect a lot of points in this one. Obviously at Davidson Academy, we talk about them every week. You got Stone Norton at quarterback, Dewan Hewitt in the backfield. They score about 50 points a game. Uh, I think their defense is going to have to be a little better in this one. They've been giving up a lot of points recently. I know Fayette Academy has a great dual threat quarterback. I can't think of the young man's name. But, I mean, they're, they're going to be put to the test, I think, this week more so than they have in any of their first uh, six games. So is the over-under in this contest 80? 
Uh, I like the Bears 47-35, so I would be, I guess, taking the under with that. There but, yeah, that, that's a pretty good mark, I would say. Tom Crager's going with a little lower scoring game. He thinks Davis and Academy's going to win 27-21. to 21. Okay, okay. All right, and now we go to the Macaulay-Brentwood Academy game that we discussed earlier. Macaulay's 6-1, 2-1 and and in D2, AA East Middle. Brentwood Academy, as you know, is 7-0 and and 3-0. and Yeah, uh, we kind of, we touched on it. You know, if the Blue Tornado can win this, that you're going to cause a log jam up top. There's going to be a ton of one-loss teams in the East Middle region. Uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, obviously, Macaulay coached by former BA coach Ralph Potter. Uh, I don't think they have enough. They haven't played M Brentwood Academy great in past seasons. I don't think that changes Friday at like BA 31-17. And Tom Kreger likes BA 48 to 21. And the next game, Independence and CPA. We discussed this game a little bit earlier. Uh, not obviously a huge win, but no region implication. Yeah. It's just a status game and a, where do we stand at week eight of the season kind of a game. And I think you, you look at CPA, obviously they're undefeated. They, undefeated. they don't want to lose a game, even if it's in non-region. Um, and Independence, this is a big momentum game for them. They've won their last two. We talked about they were one and three start. They're back to 500. You don't want to take a step back. If you do, it's not the end of the world. you got region games ahead of you, but I think this is – as, as big as it gets as far as non-region games. Is this the best secondary uh, independence we've seen yet with that passing game? Uh, I think they saw a team in week one that was pretty good. Oakland, what do you think? I love Oakland's secondary. This might be second best. Really? I, I, I would agree that Oakland's got the – had the best secondary in the state, maybe still has the best secondary in the state. They've had some injuries along the way, but – CPA's got a darn good secondary. They do, and we talked off mic a little bit. They got a darn good everything, really. They don't blow you away coming off the bus, but every one of their players that gets on that field knows what they're doing. They're well coached. They just get the job done. I like CPA 34-31. And Mr. Kreger likes CPA 28-21. to And we'll go to our next game, which will be Shelbyville, 5-1 and and 2-0 and in Region 5-5A. They'll be playing Summit. Four and three and three and one. Uh, Golden Eagles are unbeaten when Grayson Trammell's in the lineup. That's their last four games. He missed that week two loss. Uh, I think that trend continues. Shelbyville 28, Summit 14. Craiger likes Shelbyville 35 to 27. Next game up, Columbia Academy 6 and 0 at Franklin Road Academy 4 and 2. Another nine region, but kind of a status game. Yeah, this and it's it won't be the same class, but. Columbia Academy, destined for Division II next year. These two schools, they played a lot in recent memory. Uh, last year, FRA gave up 56 points to Columbia Academy. I don't think it'll be that bad this year, but I think I do like Columbia Academy in, in somewhat of a closer game. They're picking a squeaker. Yeah. 21 to 20. Oh, squeaker. Mr. Kreger thinks it's 35 to 21, Columbia Academy. Okay. All right, we move on to Gallatin, 4 and 3, at Hendersonville, 5 and 2. Uh, these teams no longer region foes? No, no longer region opponents. That, that used to be the biggest rivalry yeah. in Sumner County. Tell us a little bit about that. You I can tell you Gallatin. that you can throw every record out when these two yeah. teams play. Uh, that still is the biggest rivalry in Sumner uh, County, even with Station Camp joining the fray and, yep. and Beach, Beach coming in yep. years ago. It still gets no bigger than this for both of these teams. Generally, they used to play the last game of the year. and mm -hmm. used to be for a first place in the district, region, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, still big. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, a lot of playoff matchups between those two schools, too. I, I, they can't do that this year. They're in different classes. Uh, and then also new for this year, Bruce Hatfield won't be on the sideline. That's the first time in about 21 years, I think. So. Right. Um, I like Hendersonville, 35-21. Tom likes Hendersonville, 28-14. to All right, moving to the last game, it'll be Kenwood, 4-3 and 3-1 and and in 7-5A, facing Clarksville, 5-2 and 1-2. And and uh Kenwood, they got a gift with the whole Northeast forfeit losses or forfeiting their games. They actually got a big region win as a result of that. And I was looking at their schedule earlier. Their three losses this season have come to teams with a combined 20 and one record. So their losses have been against really good teams. Clarksville's dropped two of its last three. They're in desperate need of a win. I think they get it. I, th I like Clarksville 42, Kenwood 21. Clarksville's bruising a little bit. I know uh, this would be a signature win then for yep. Kenwood. You know, they can beat yep. the lesser teams. They haven't beaten the better teams. This would mm -hmm. be beating a better team right now. Uh, Tom has Clarksville winning 35-14. to 14. 
Yeah, and, it, and like you said, if Kenwood can win this game, they're pretty much, I think, a lock for that second seed, meaning they'll host a playoff game. So that should be a huge win for that program. Right. One game we didn't touch on, Marshall County at Giles County. Not the greatest records, but when you talk, you look at quarterback Bryce Wallace, this is making his, he'll be playing his former team in Marshall County. He led Marshall County to three consecutive, two consecutive Class 4A semifinal finishes. Uh, It'll be interesting. I don't think there's any love lost between between those. There's two never been love lost. Now there's you know a little hey. bad blood. I, <laughs> even in Murfreesboro, I got emails from people Did asking you? me to look into that situation of, of him moving. So I'm like, that's far far away from my coverage area. But yep. if people are doing that, then it, it, I, there might be some defensive linemen and some linebackers that might be a little angry. Come yeah, Friday night. I would think so. Uh, Giles, a little bit on a downturn after that East Nashville loss. I, I believe that's their second straight loss. They're at three and three. I do like them to bounce back against Marshall County, though. I think they get that win. Well, there you go. There you have it. It's week eight, folks. Playoffs are coming it up. It is getting about that time. Folks, that's all we have. I'm Michael Murphy, Cecil Joyce with the DNJ. Thanks for watching.